Well, let's go to Orloff again. On November 3rd, 2020, it's Election Day. Later on this evening, I'm going to do uh, the Gratu Orloff Network Election Day coverage. We're going to uh, cover as the votes are tabulated. And uh, so that that uh, will be coming up later tonight. thought I'd do a brief uh, haul video. And uh, on my last video, someone gave me a thumbs down. But a lot of people are giving me thumbs up, so that's great. But, uh, gee, I don't know. I guess it's, you know, mentioning politics gets some people pissed off. I'll have to assume it's that. Well, as I, uh, this is a cool poster that I got free as I was going out the door at Duncanville Books. And promoting... Uh, Batman, Catwoman. So, I guess that's upcoming. What does it say on here? Available in December. Well, that looks good. So, what did I pick up today? Well, first of all, I got confused in the last video. I picked up a comic book because it had uh, an Alex Ross Medusa cover. And it turned out to be, I guess, the third part of a Neil Adams Fantastic Four trilogy. So I thought, wow, I have Fantastic Four being drawn by Neil Adams? So I, I went back and got what I thought. I thought I had the second issue. So I went back and looked, got the previous issue, which was a, a takeoff of the uh, Galactus trilogy Fantastic Four cover. So... Uh, but that was issue two. And then I got confused. And, but apparently I still needed issue one. So I went back and I picked up issue one. And I don't know which, if this is the right cover to get. Because there's like 50, this is what confuses. I, I can't imagine a, a novice comic book collector. Because here I am coming back into it. And all these variant covers confuse the hell out of me. But it doesn't say second printing. I guess the artist is okay. Yeah, whatever. So that's that. So now I have the trilogy and I can read it. Um, I hope I don't already have this. It's the Creatures on the Loose that introduces Cole, who is a distant ancestor of Conan the Barbarian. <coughs> oh man, I had a... Um, Yesterday, we went to Walmart to try to stock up on uh, supplies in case the world goes nuts tonight or tomorrow. And uh, my wife was buying pajamas and, and st stuff. I, I, I looked around and... Um, uh, what did... Oh, I was looking and I, I saw a Funko Pop of Cyclops as he appeared in X-Men number one, you know, the early X-Men, uh, early 60s. But the paint was kind of off right underneath the visor. But I saw Marvel Girl there, who later became known as Jean Grey or Phoenix, right? So I thought that was really cool. So I picked that up. And right as I was picking it up, I had to sneeze. And I was wearing my stupid face diaper, right? And I had to sneeze, and I, and I sneezed into this diaper. You know, apparently people were laughing because Joe Biden was... Uh, I, I love how he puts his mask on like this. And then he moves it down. But anyway, he, he was coughing, and he, he, he lowered his mask to cough. He always coughs into his hand. But, uh, and then he moved his mask back up. Anyway, I, I, I sneezed. I never had to sneeze before wearing one of these stupid things. I sneezed right into the thing, right? So this morning, I go to pick up breakfast at this diner for my wife and I. For my wife and me. I need to speak proper grammar. For me. Not for I. Anyway, so, former English teacher, got to get this right. So anyway, um, I pick up the same mask, because I reuse them, because I'm an idiot. And, and, and it's like, I hate these fucking things. So anyway, so I, I put it on to go into the diner to get my food, and it smelled so horrible because, the, the I guess, the sneeze that I did, I sneezed into it. So, like, I threw it down, and I reached to get another mask from this little box, and then I bumped the shit out of the top of my head on the top, you know, right above the, 
uh, it's like I was like going, God damn motherfucker, it's just like all because someone had to invent this this malady in some lab. All right, so I bumped my little head. It still hurts actually, but I have a bump. Okay, so Ghost Manor, Charlton. This is in the two dollar bin. But this is when uh, they thought in the late 60s they'd get a swinging uh, girl ghost host. So uh, that's why I picked it up. I mean, it's not in good shape. It's in the $2 bin. And uh, here she is again, also from the $2 bin. And I picked this one up. This is a later period ghost manor when the, the swing and mod witch was no uh, ghost rather was no longer used. And this has just got some cool Steve Ditko art. Steve Ditko really did have principles. I mean, he left Marvel doing Spider Man, which is one of the biggest selling comics going, and, and, and doing Doctor Strange because his beliefs as a follower of Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand. It's supposed to be pronounced Ayn Rand, I believe. But anyway, he was, he was really big into this philosopher. And one of her beliefs was that there are creators, people that create things in society, and then there are people that just kind of suck off them. And he saw himself as the creator of Spider-Man and, and Doctor Strange. And Stan Lee was just going around saying, I invented this. And, and uh, he had certain philosophies, you know, like when Spider-Man was swinging over the city, he'd look down at these teenage protesters and he'd, he'd be thinking, well, they, they ought to get a job. What a bunch of scum, basically, something like that. That's what Steve Ditko intended for the word balloons to say. And I'm sure he wrote that in the margins. And then when Stan Lee came in and uh, did his job in punching up the dialogue, he, he kind of made it more like, uh, way to go, guys, I'm with you all the way, you know. And uh, I, I, I think, you know, Steve Ditko was the main creator, but if Stan Lee wasn't there to punch up the dialogue, uh, Spider-Man may have been a far more dour and intro, uh, more uh, less fun character, much like the characters that Steve Ditko created later on, like Mr. A and the question that nobody remembers <coughs> now, and nobody makes action figures of, or so, uh, or movies or cartoons because they're not fun. And I think Stan Lee brought the spirit of fun into it. So Stan Lee was important, but but anyway, Steve Ditko just walked away from it. And, and worked for smaller companies like Charlton, and I can't imagine Charlton paid much. But, who you knows, it's all about self-respect, I guess. Picked up a bunch of little monsters. Uh, some of them may be duplicates that I already have, but I just couldn't let them stay there um, in the $2 bin. And this is uh, issue number 12. Little Monsters was kind of a monsters kind of knock off but the whole family are frankensteins basically now the monsters you ever wonder you know it's like well goddamn the, the dad's a frankenstein and the mom's a vampire so why is the son a werewolf um you sure it really wasn't cheating on frankenstein there but um uh, i don't know so they make it easy. Everybody's a Frankenstein in this family. The little monsters. Horrible Orvi and Awful Annie. That was number 35, so they wrote it on there. It's nice of them. No, at this point, they were probably re reprints in the 60s. I, I don't know. In the 70s, they were just reprinting the 60s stuff. This is a Whitman variant. And, uh, oh boy, that has an old-timey price tag on it. Oh, yeah, it has a price tag on there. See that price tag? This is put on there in some store 
th uh, it's just reduced 15 cents. So that was put on there in the 70s. But anyway, it's uh, issue number 32. I've got my old man flashlight that I bought the other day that I can, I can uh, see things with. Greatest invention ever. Here's Little Monsters number 31. It's got a car brake, so CGC may knock off points when I send this in to them to be slabbed. Am I even recording? I better check. Yes, I am. I'm at the 11 minute mark. <laughs> number 27, Little Monsters. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Um, number 26. Yeah, I was talking to my wife uh, the other day. You know, this this whole uh, uh, um, flu fad with the mask. Uh, I was thinking, it, this is really killing. Uh, wouldn't you think the lipstick industry? Why, why would a woman go buy lipstick if they have to cover up their mouth every fucking place they go? In California, they're saying you got to put this back on in between bites and restaurants. All right. Also from the $2 bin, it's call number 23. I don't think I have this issue. Kind of looks like the, the demon from Curse of the Demon from the famed, was it 1950s or early 60s film? Here's Cole the Destroyer from 15. No, from 15. From, this is issue 15. This is from the $2 bin. Indeed. Nice. Okay. Here's Joe Kubert's tour. And, uh... He did this character for DC, but I guess he actually owned the character because later he went on and did his own version that's slightly uh, more nudity. That's in the $2 bin, and I couldn't pass it up for $2. And here's when Don Martin defected and uh, went over to, to Cracked from Mad. It's like a whole Cracked full of... Uh, Don Martin, and it's two dollars, you know. I'm gonna pick that up. Damn. Run out of places, put stuff around there, motherfucking place. Looks like the cover is completely detached on this, and I think I may even already own this. But it's two dollars, and it's the Warren Spaceman when uh, they were trying to do a old fashioned science fiction kind of uh, magazine as a companion to Famous Monsters. It didn't last. Oh, and the, uh, damn, it's it's like square bound. It's the uh, 1974 14th annual sick. It's, the, it's a sick annual. Yeah, by the, by the 70s, sick was pretty shitty, but, you know, it's sick. Oh my, I'm not going to buy sick. Are you kidding me? Um, uh, damn. Oh yeah, I love the Rook, who's a time-traveling hero, and I'm pretty sure I don't have this issue number six, re-teams up with Sherlock Holmes. Man, I'm really sleepy today. I've been falling asleep all over the place. I've been recording all my old segments, like uh, recording uh, uh, all these segments that I've done for YouTube. I've been putting them on DVD-R just in case the internet goes down because I'm hearing all these conspiracy theories. You wouldn't believe all the stuff I'm hearing. That they may just shut down the internet for seven days or something and clean it up or something. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Um, oh, um, real important, I haven't mentioned it yet, um, let's see what I can find here, ah oh, yes, I have not mentioned the passing of Sean Connery, 
one of my all-time idols, a great human being. And uh, he was, uh, they recruited him for the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie. And after that, he decided to hell with it. I'm just going to retire from movies. So he passed away on Halloween morning, or that's when they announced it at age 90. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was a great comic book, but Hollywood completely messed it up and had to put in American Tom Sawyer and all this. You know, they just rigged it up. And Sean Connery just was sick of it. And uh, that's, that's, no, that. No. All right. Filling in some holes in my horror collection. Uh, that I didn't buy back in third, fourth grade. Vault of Evil, number 10. Because, you know, 20 cents. You say, well, why didn't you buy all of them? They were only 20 cents. Well, 20 cents was meant more back then. And if we go back on the gold standard, maybe it will again. Here's number uh, 10. It's a unfortunate color break that made made lower my value, but it's a Bill Everett cover. Look at his uh, cool signature there. It's the Democrat alert. The Democrats are going crazy in the streets. Um, it sounds like the Democrats going to be real upset tonight. They're saying Trump has a three percent chance of winning. According to the Drudge Report, boy, they either Drudge, Matt Drudge sold his uh, whole website or they have something on him. Or, or maybe he just got really, he's completely different. Four years ago, he was completely in the bag for Trump. Uh, I don't know. Well, if, if Trump wins, we'll know that the all almost all the media are complete liars. And uh, who knows what's going to happen. Whatever's going to happen, I'm sure there's going to be a great... Weeping, wailing, and arguing. Vault of Evil, number 11. Number 16. All right. Well, we got enough water downstairs to drown a whale. We got uh, Spam and Doubled Ham to get us through the apocalypse. All right. Weird Mystery, number two. Titanic cover. Another comic that missed me back then. And this cover is just so damn cool. Wyatt Earp, number 31. Everything's cool about it. Everything from the colors, from the red with the yellow. Look at how, how look at the design of Wyatt Earp. And look at the, oh, and it's that 20 cent period where, of Marvel where they had a box uh, the art was in a box on the cover and it's just it's just great who's the artist I don't know who the artist is but this artist this is a genius I had to get that indeed oh I picked up my childhood copy of Worlds Unknown number two I showed you the other week but my older brother had drawn blood on the fangs of the Tyrannosaurus Rex or Allosaurus or Velociraptor or whatever that's supposed to be. I think it's a T-Rex. Anyway, so I got a copy that does not have red blood drawn on there by my brother who, we got another piece of mail from him the other week and we uh, tried to reach him by phone and we got a text back from that number. That, uh, <coughs> We tried to send a text, and and they said, well, this is the wrong number, so so I don't know how to reach my brother. Mm. TV Casper and Company. Oh, I love it. Oh, and one of the first comics I ever got was a was a reprint of the '50s Three Mouseketeers. Here's real 50s Three Mouseketeers. I love the Three Mouseketeers. I love it, love it, love it. And it's got a free ice cream coupon. 10 cents. I wonder if you sent that ice cream coupon in 
whether they'd still redeem it 60 something years later. Oh my gosh, I picked this up. Superman and Batman teaming up. World's finest, 80 page giant. Number 141. Someone wrote five cents on this, probably at a garage sale at some distant Halcyon date. Halcyon, is that how you pronounce it? What does Halcyon mean? Like ancient time? I think so. Halcyon. H A L Y C O N. One of those words I've I've already seen, but I've never said it aloud. And I don't think I've ever heard any motherfucker ever say it out loud either. Oh. No, Supergirl. You're you're not showing the readers my baby pictures. She's saying, yes, Superman, this whole issue is devoted to our adventures as super babies. So here are uh, Superman and Supergirl when they were babies. I don't remember any Supergirl baby stories. When she showed up on Earth, she was already like a teenager. Um, and the stories that they're showing in the scrapbook are all super baby. You probably think I'm a fool to enjoy reading super baby stories. But I am not the fool. I'm a genius. Everyone knows it. Here's uh, The Lone Ranger, number 23. It's Ten Cent Dell. And you know it's old when Lone Ranger's wearing a red shirt because the 19, early 1950s TV show established in our minds that the Lone Ranger wears a blue shirt. And so anything with a red shirt, you know, predates that. And this, this would be after, you know, or during the time of the TV show. This is 38, because now we've got the classic the way we know the Lone Ranger today with the blue shirt and the red um, yes indeed yes indeed I'll open these comic books up later and show you the interiors right now I'm just doing a quick little video it's a 10 cent hot stuff number 40 Amazing, huh? And the incredible Frosty the Snowman. It's Christmas time is coming. If it's not canceled. Well, that's my amazing uh, haul. He seems like a frail old man who's losing his mind, Biden. But make no mistake, the guy is um, not what he seems. Listen to what he says and how he says it. He's, a, he's the, in high school. He was a uh, you can tell he was a schoolyard bully. It's all this references to, I wish I was in high school, I'd take him back behind the gym, and I... Um, he's not... I don't, I don't like him. Judge a person by uh, how their children turn out. Well, sometimes good people have bad kids. I can't always say that. Uh, anyway... I guess everyone's nervous. I mean, I think Trump's going to win, but who knows? Maybe everyone's right. This is Duncanville Bookstore, by the way, if you're curious where I've been picking up all these treasures lately. Well, with that, I've got important shit to do, like go buy some Cokes, like Coca-Cola. <laughs> I'm not Hunter Biden here. Go buy some Coca-Cola, the soft drink, the pause that refreshes, so I can uh, vidi the television today to see the election re returns.
I love my new magnifying glass. It makes me officially a retired person. Goddamn. Motherfucker. Shit. And with that, farewell.